Hello, Svetlana. How are you today? Nice to see you. We've got Augustina coming on. Melissa's coming in. It's nice to see everybody here. Um, if you uh, feel uncomfortable, I encourage you to feel free. Svetlana's on public transit. She's got her camera on, on y'all to hang out with us. So if you feel comfortable, turn your camera on so we can all click together and, and say hi. If anyone doesn't know, uh, my name is Chef Ben. Uh, I work with Homemade. Super excited to be partnering with the USO. Again, we've got Nicole here. We've got Liz here. Um, this In the Kitchen series, I am unbelievably grateful and honored to be cooking with. Every time we do it, I, I have more and more fun. It's just such a great thing for me to be able to just cook and hang out and just participate in something that's fun and bring bring families and friends from across the country and across the world together and be able to just relax and hang out and have fun for a little bit. Um, so Liz, one, super good to see you again. I love cooking with you every time. How are you, how are you doing down there in, uh, it's Louisiana, is that right? Louisiana, can you, can you see the cutting board behind me? I had to buy this when <laughs> I first moved here last summer. It's the shape of Louisiana. That's nice. You can also bring it in the car with you if your GPS ever goes bad. You just grab your cutting board and hit the road. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. That's a pretty awesome cutting board. Um, well, I would, again, I'd just like to say thank you uh, to be here for the, with the In the Kitchen series with the USO. It's really great to be cooking. Nicole, is this the first time we've cooked together? I was here last time. I just wasn't on camera. So today I'm all in. That's why, because you weren't on camera. That's why I don't remember. Okay, very, very cool. It's great to have you cooking along today. Um, for anybody that is cooking along, I want to just basically encourage you to interact with us. This is basically treat this like a family for the next half hour, 45 minutes, three and a half hours, however long that we're here for. Um, no, it won't be that long, but treat this like we're friends, interactive. Um, you can absolutely raise your little virtual hand in Zoom and uh, we have amazing chef Heather. Say hello to Heather. Hi, Heather, who is in the chat. She's gonna be here along with uh, Trish, also from the USO to be able to answer questions for you. Um, but you can also raise your little virtual hand and unmute and that way you can talk to Nicole, you can talk to Liz, you can talk to me, we can talk about the food. I'd love to hear about people's experiences like traveling all over the place, your experience with the USO and the amazing programs, um, just to be able to talk and hang out. So um, even though you're muted now, just know if you go down to the bottom of your Zoom screen, there's that little reactions button and you can raise your virtual hand um, and we'll be able to call on you so that we can hang out and talk as we as we go. Um, Liz, before we get started, before we get cooking, is there anything that you want to talk about? You want to welcome anybody in or, or talk about as far as the USL goes? Because I don't want to steal the show. I do that all the time as it is. So I want to give you a chance to talk. <laughs> You're welcome to steal the show. Thank you, Chef Ben. Uh, I just want to welcome everybody to In the Kitchen. Um, we're so excited that you're here. The whole purpose of In the Kitchen is to get military spouses and military families together to connect over something we all love, which is food. Whether you love to prepare it or not, we all love to eat it, I think. So we're here to connect. Feel free to type in the chat box where you're joining us from. Uh, I know that we are global. We have people all over the world who are, are signed up to join us today. So it's really fun and really special. Um, like Chef Ben said, you're welcome. You don't have to. If you all want to chat in the chat box, feel free to do that. Talk about what we're doing, um, react to what we're saying and what we're preparing. Hello, everybody. If you have specific questions, you can put them in the chat box or you can put them in the Q&A box. Like Chef Ben said, we do have Heather who's just behind the scenes and she is a wonderful chef herself. She can answer any recipe uh, questions, substitution questions, if you have food allergies, anything like that that you need to swap out, she can help with that behind the scenes. I'm joined by Nicole and also Trish Ryder, who's in our chat box. We are your USO Mill Spouse team. We're super, super happy that you're here with us today. If you didn't get the recipe for what we're going to be preparing today, let us know. Drop your email in the chat box. Trish will make sure to email that to you. It just went out about an hour ago via email, so check your email for that. And um, oh, thank you for putting that in the chat box just now, Heather. So if you didn't have time to prepare ahead of time, totally cool. Just watch, enjoy, talk to us as we go along. And if you did prepare, we're really looking forward to cooking with you today. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to Chef Ben and the main team. <laughs> 
I love it. I'm excited. I'm seeing cameras come on. We've got Kate has joined us here. Michelle is cooking along. Um, so really excited about this recipe all here too, because part of what we're talking about in the kitchen this month is the weather is hopefully where you're living, starting to get a little bit nicer. Assuming we're in the Northern hemisphere, it is spring. Um, and as spring is coming, one of the best ways to be kind of uh, active is to get outside and be a little recreation, so recreational and just getting out, enjoying nature. One of the trickier things about that, though, is making sure you're prepared to do that. And so we kind of came up with this recipe um, and this menu that is something that's absolutely delicious if you're just in your yard at your picnic table, you want to have this for dinner at night. That's totally great. But this is also a really, really nutrient rich delicious meal that's easy to pack and take on the go with this chicken salad sandwich and also farro. Uh, Liz and Nicole and I were talking a little bit before class, like farro is one of my favorite just foods and ingredients, period. Absolutely one of my favorite grains. So if people aren't used to it, really excited to introduce this to you and get talking about it. Um, so when we get cooking, I always like to make sure before anything, we go over all of the ingredients because I want to make sure I know some of this stuff you might not have been able to find or you have questions about it. So before we actually even get like our pans hot and our knives going, I want to go over all the ingredients and it'll give us a little time to kind of chat back and forth if you have any questions at all about like why we're using something or if you couldn't find it, substitutions and stuff like that. So we're set up just to have as much fun as possible. So I'm going to switch over to a different little camera here and talk about what we need for our for our recipe. So first thing we're gonna go over is gonna be our farro salad. So we're gonna have almost like a little marinade or a little dressing that we're gonna mix up in a separate bowl. And that's gonna be the zest and juice of one pretty normal sized lemon. We have about a teaspoon of crushed red pepper. If you're not a big spice fan, you can cut that back, not a big deal. Uh, totally, totally up to you on that. We have cardamom, which is one of my favorite spices. It's a little bit spicy. It's got a little bit of like kind of citrus and floral notes to it. So we've got three quarters of a teaspoon of ground cardamom. If you don't have ground cardamom, you can absolutely leave it out. Or you could even use a little pinch, like maybe like half a teaspoon or so of cinnamon. And it would still give you kind of like that warmth, that warming spice that we're going to look for in our salad. Um, last but not least is going to be about three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. I do recommend though, um, have a little bit extra on hands because not everyone has the same lemons. You might have more lemon juice. It might be a little bit more acidic. So we're gonna taste our, our dressing once we put everything together. And if you feel like you need a little bit more olive oil, have some on hands ready to go. Then we've got the kind of the body here, like the real stars of our, of our salad. We've got a couple scallions, which we're gonna be using just the green so slice them up really, really nice and thin. We have our farro, so it's about two cups here. Um, you could also use brown rice would be delicious, quinoa would be great, um, wild rice, any sort of grain that you like, but we're going with farro here today, um, and it's already cooked, ready to go, ready to mix up. Chickpeas, garbanzos, we've got three quarters of a cup, They're canned, totally fine, but if you're using canned, just rinse them and drain them. Whether you have low sodium ones or not, I always like to point that out. There's so much salt in those cans. And I'm not even talking about it from a diet perspective, but we wanna be in control of what our salad tastes like. Um, so we don't wanna go with the salt that's on these guys. So rinse them really well, drain them really well so they're dry and then have them ready to go. Um, greens of your choice. I'm going with arugula. It's one of my favorite things. You could use baby spinach, baby kale. You could use a little like gre salad greens mix, whatever you want, but we've got about three cups there. About a quarter cup, just a nice handful of parsley. You could also use cilantro if you want to, that we're gonna chop up finely. And then some almonds uh, that we're just gonna lightly toast and mix through. And again, I guess this is the theme today. This is about a quarter of, uh, a, quarter of a cup. If yours aren't toasted yet, no stress. I'm gonna toast mine as we're going along. Then we've got our sandwich situation. So first is kind of the I guess the building blocks or the accoutrements here of the sandwich. We've got some really nice whole grain bread, um, as many as much as you need to make uh, sandwiches for. So I'm going to make two sandwiches, but you can make up the four with this if you want. We've got some nice lettuce. I've got butter lettuce here. You could use the same stuff you're using for your salad if you wanted to. And then just a couple of tomatoes to slice up. I grabbed some parchment because I figured it's a picnic. So I'm going to wrap them up afterwards and take them with me, basically. And we've got over here for a chicken salad. So we've got a little bit of Greek yogurt. It's about a tablespoon and a half or so of Greek yogurt. Regular yogurt is all would be fine. And juice. 
We've got a little bit of granulated garlic or garlic powder. So it's about a quarter of a teaspoon. If you wanted to, you could use fresh garlic and chop it up, it would be fine. Scope more parsley, which is an official measurement. Um, a little bit of dried cranberries or raisins, like this is about a quarter of a cup, a little handful. And then we've got sal celery. Celery is the one, a little bit more scallions that we're going to but not least, it's not chicken salad without the chicken for the salad. Um, so we've got a rotisserie chicken here. You could absolutely just cook off like um, chicken breasts or chicken legs and then shred them, however you wanted to do it. But the easiest thing to make this recipe nice and quick and get you outdoors is going to be buy one of those beautiful rotisserie chickens at your grocery store and then we're just going to out, shred it up ourselves. Um, and I've got a nice big bowl ready to go to put that in. So that's kind of the rundown of everything that we're going to need. As far as ingredients go, grab yourself a nice skillet. It doesn't have to be on heat yet, but we're going to need that. And so I'm going to pause for a second. I want to check in uh, Nicole, Liz, Katie, Michelle, anybody. Oh, Robin looks like she's cooking with us. Kate too. Anyone that's cooking along, any questions about ingredients, things you couldn't find, substitutions, anything like that. This is your, your chance here. Oh, how many tablespoons is uh, the juice of a lemon? If I just have lemon juice. Yeah, wow. yeah, that's a good question, Katie. Um, I would say probably most lemons on average would be two to three tablespoons or so. So I would probably start with two tablespoons of lemon juice, taste it, and then go from there. Um, one of those rules when you're sort of making dressings like that and you're eyeballing it, which I'm all about, you can always add more stuff, but it's hard to take stuff away. So start with lower lemon juice and you can add it as you go. That's a great question. Um, Yes. Um, I cooked it last night. Was I supposed to drain it or something? Or? So Robin, um, that's one of the nice things about Faro is that it's really forgiving. Um, so yes, you cooked it last night, totally fine. Would have been ideal to drain it. Um, if you didn't drain it, it's gonna be one of those few grains that I think is probably still hardy enough that it's gonna hold up. Um, it might've soaked up a little bit of extra water overnight. It's like oatmeal. <laughs> oh, is it really? Can I see it? Robin. Yeah, that's a bit much. Okay. Um, Maybe it smells like oatmeal. <laughs> no. <laughs> I love it. You just invented something new. I love oatmeal and I love farro, and I didn't know that that could happen, Robin. So now. I didn't do that because, but I didn't know if I should have drained this. So I probably will take out the amount I need and rinse it. Yeah. Give it a. Um, I, there's a uh, recipe where a lot of people uh, make it and add sugar. I am so excited by this, actually. <laughs> I love learning new stuff, and that makes me very, very happy. See, if, see what you can do with it. See if you can make it work. If not, um, the rest of the stuff getting mixed up is totally fine. You could cook another small batch of farro, or if you had even like you know some rice or something else around, that would be a great grain for this salad too. So I, I did it with a slow cooker, also. On the back of the package, it said, you know, do it with or in the on stove or wherever. And I've done nothing with barrel, but I said, okay, it's a grain. Yeah. It could be like a barley or like a... Uh, that, a is, that is a good thing, actually. If you have any, do you have any left? Oh, yeah. Okay. Faro is really forgiving. Grab a small handful of it, you know, like a half a cup to a cup of it, put it in a pot, cover it with water by about an inch, and just literally okay. boil the heck out of it until it's the texture you like, and then drain it off. There's no ratio for water, there's nothing. There's just have it fully submerged in water, boil it away, and then when it's the right texture, drain it off and you'll be good. Okay, so we want more of a uh, coarse kind of softened texture. Yours yep. Looks you still want to have like, you still want the granules like that. And it's always gonna have a little chew to it, depending on how much okay. texture you want, is how far you cook it. If you want it a little softer, keep cooking it. If you want it a little bit more chew, then you can, you can cook it a little less. I'd say I've done nothing with this grain. Oh, I didn't know. You made beautiful oatmeal with the grain. That's something. Um, any other questions, y'all? Are we feeling pretty good? Ready to start putting this together? That's it. Ben, before we get started, yeah. if there aren't any questions, I just want to give a shout out. I see some kids. 
and I want to recognize that April is the month of the military child, and we appreciate all of you military kids for everything you all do. You guys are as big a part of the family as anybody, and we appreciate you. So know that your USOs all around the world are celebrating you this month. Be sure to check out our Facebook pages or their web pages to find out what you can do to join in on the fun. It is month of the military child. So today. That is absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, the resiliency of those kids, like all of you kids bouncing around and meeting new friends and new homes and new things, like that is unbelievably, uh, that's a difficult thing. And so being able to do that and still do good stuff in school and stuff is amazing. So I love that you all are here. So also, all the kids, feel free. Kids cooking is one of the most important things to me. So if you all have questions as we're going, speak up. I want to hear you all, okay? So I'm going to switch over really quick, and we're going to start by toasting our almonds, just because I want to get those toasting while we're doing everything else. So if you want to grab any sort of skillet that you have, go ahead and put it over just a medium-low heat. So maybe like a 3 or a 4 out of 10 at home, like whatever you have, okay? And we're going to take our almonds and just very carefully spread them out on the bottom of the pan. Nice, even. Um, if they're piled up on top of each other, they're never going to toast evenly. So if you find them piled up on top of each other, just grab a little bit bigger pan so that they can be spread out. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. I think I might have hit the mute button by mistake. That's it happens. That's what happens when I don't get my coffee until right before class. I hit the mute button by mistake. My fault. Um, so this is just really lightly toasting. We're gonna keep an eye on it. So that's why we're on that really low heat, like three out of ten, something like this. Please ask, can you toast them in the oven? You can, but if you're doing a smaller amount of like any sort of nuts that you need to toast, I like doing it in the pan because you can keep an eye on it. And I think we've all, show of hands, how many people have gone to toast like almonds or, you know, pistachios or something and end up burning them, right? Yes? Don't, come on, you all. Yes, there we go. There are the hands. Thank you for honesty here. Yeah, it happens to the best of us. Um, so if you have a small amount, doing them on the stove top's good. So we've got those. We'll keep an eye on them. They're already starting to smell amazing. While those are toasting, we're going to put together our dressing for our farro salad. So that is going to be, again, we've got our cardamom, we've got our chili flakes, our olive oil, and we've got our lemon. You brought up a really good point here is that the lemon is going to be the kind of thing that is it's going to be different for each of you. You have different types of lemons. Some have more juice. Some might be a little bit more sour, some a little bit more acidic. So as we're going through with this, we'll adjust the seasoning with salt, with pepper, and then you are going to be in control of adjusting it to how you like it by adding a little bit more salt, a little bit more olive oil, stuff like that. Okay. First things first, put all of the here. chili flakes. Um, I like spice. I'm going to put my cardamom in as well. And then I'm going to grab a little zester, start zesting. The tricky thing about it is making sure you don't go too deep down in the lemon. Like you don't want to get into the white parts of it because the white You can absolutely do this, or if you can't find like good ones, you could absolutely do this with a vinegar that you really like, like red wine vinegar, even like a white balsamic or something. But the lemon is just really great. Melissa, what? Well Yeah, so when you were doing the, uh, the rasp with the uh, lemon for the... Yes. Were you seeing like... Right? Um, so you can find... You absolutely could. Sometimes the, the lemon dried, like zest and stuff is a little bit bigger, Melissa. So, um, I would just say like chop it up a little bit. 
you have one of those kind of like uh, little coffee mill spice grinder things, maybe put it in there and for a second. It's a, not like those really, really big bites of it, you know? Okay, and then um, it's okay if you have a zester, you know? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Definitely do that. Let's see what live TV is like. This is the real world, everybody. My headset's going all wonky, so I'm switching. Um, coming back to the camera while we're doing that, because I want you to see the, the, the realities here. No, um, I just wanted to be able to check in. How is everyone doing with your dressing? So we've got our lemon zest in lemon juice, as much chili flake and cardamom as you want, and you can go ahead and hit it with a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and then we're gonna start putting in our olive oil, and that's when we're gonna taste it and see like what we think about it. I'm getting thumbs up across the screen. This is fun. You got, is, this, is this a good look for me, standing here like this with a lemon juice covered hand and seeing how everything's gone? Yeah. That's good. You all, are, you all are the best. You're so good. Um, all right, there. Can you all hear me better now? Is this good? Yes. Goodness knows being able to hear me well is, is a, a reward unto itself, so it's very important. Um, all right, cool. So back in the game, I'm going to hit mine with a little bit of the a little bit of salt, maybe just a little pinch, a little bit of pepper. And again, put in your olive oil and then give it a taste. And this is going to be completely up to you on what you think. Now, the one thing I will say, even though it's up to you, is you have to think this is going over a lot of other ingredients. We've got all of our grains and we've got uh, all of the, the chickpeas and all the greens and all that kind of stuff. So this should taste pretty aggressive like it should taste too much on its own you know if it tastes like delicious and you're like i would just want to eat this with a spoon it's going to be bland in the salad so when you taste this it should be a little spicy it should be a little acidic so that when you're going through the whole thing it's uh it's delicious and then kate did you all have a question down in your kitchen i thought i saw a hand raised <clears throat> no we're good okay all right cool so i'm gonna give mine a little taste see what i think It's so good with the lemon and the cardamom. Kind of like that warmth from the cardamom, it's delicious. I'm gonna add just a little bit more salt, another little pinch of salt, but holy cow, that's good. And I'm now uh, living the repercussions of going, going all the way in on the, uh, on the chili, and I'm not upset about it, but it's, uh, it's bringing up some feelings. It's bringing up some emotions. Um, woo, all right. Keeping an eye on my almonds. I'm gonna turn my heat up just a little bit. Uh, Liz, how's yours taste? Is yours good? You happy with it? I'm good. My uh, dressing definitely needed more lemon. All I can taste is olive oil. But there you go. Don't you? Don't you dare ever say to me again, measuring it out. We don't measure things. This is not. <laughs> no, we we put it in, we taste it, we see what we think. No measures. That's just more dishes you have to do. So much better. There you go, perfect. So I'm gonna add in my rinsed and drained chickpeas into my uh, farro, and then we're gonna thinly slice up our scallions. And we were talking about this earlier before everyone logged on. We're gonna be using just the green parts of these, but the white parts you can use if you really like that crunch and kind of that more oniony taste. Um, but also, if you don't want to use the white parts, you can save them and you can use them for marinades, soups and stocks. You can also even like regrow them. If you put them in a little cup of water and put them somewhere sunny, you'll start having brand new sprouts come out the top of your scallions. Um, so if you're not using the bottom parts, the white parts, then save them because you can use them for different dishes or even like regrow them. Liz was telling me about how she was uh, just finally got to plant her garden and she was very excited about it. So she's going to propagate some, she's going to propagate these exact scallion bottoms and put them in her garden, right? <laughs> Love it. Um, so just thinly slice the scallions and then we're going to transfer them over and put them into our bowl with our chickpeas as well. And once you do that, you can take your dressing and basically just pour it over the whole thing. Now, the other greens, the arugula and the parsley, we're gonna save because those would kind of wilt and um, you know, over time with the, with the acidity from the lemon juice. So just giving them a little extra time to not have them in there is gonna keep them a little bit more fresh. 
But the rest of the stuff, it's almost like even though it's a dressing, we're gonna kind of treat it a little bit like it's a marinade here and just kind of like mix it all the way through. And it's gonna let that farro and the chickpeas and such just kind of like soak up all that delicious dressing just for a little bit. So just something like that, just a beautiful little, little salad. And just so that I'm ahead, whenever you get a chance to do it, I want my parsley a little bit roughly chopped up when we mix it in later, even though we're not gonna mix it up now, I'm gonna be all chefy and get prepared, get ahead of stuff, and I'm just gonna roughly chop up my parsley and sort of set it aside. But we're gonna still save our parsley for later and not put it in until we're ready to mix the whole salad up. Now, while I'm doing that, I wanna check in uh, and just kind of ask, I know that Robin and I already had quite the conversation about farro, something that's near to my heart. That's a farro joke, near, near far. Anyways, sorry. Um, sorry. All right, so I'm not really sorry though. Um, has anybody used farro before or cooked with farro? Is this something you all are familiar with or no? I've seen a lot of this, no. Uh-uh, no. Yeah, uh, I couldn't find it in our grocery store, so I just got oh. instead. You got what? I can't have it, so I'm just using quinoa, so I'm still lacking the farro experience. Okay, that's okay. Quinoa's still, quinoa's delicious too, and that's one of those things. So it's, quinoa is like the it one, right? Like quinoa got all the press, it hired a PR agency, it did a book tour, you know, like all this kind of stuff, and farro hasn't gotten that. There you are, Robin. Bob's Red Mill is a really great brand, great company that sells a good one. Uh, if you can't find it in grocery stores, they usually you can find it online and get it shipped to you. But um, it's a really nutrient dense, really delicious grain, and it's got great texture too. So it's not one of these ones that uh, completely falls apart on you. Um, unless you make oatmeal like Robin meant to do. Um, it has a lot of body and a lot of like chew to it. So if you like wild rice, if anyone's had wild rice, farro is kind of the same thing. Even after it's cooked, it has a, like a little body and a little chew. It's got the delicious texture and it's really, really nice nutty flavor. It's one of, my, one of my favorites. So I encourage you, if you haven't found it, try and find it. And as I told Robin earlier too, it is also, um, it's, it's one of those ones that's very easy to cook. People always freak out about rice and they're like, what are the ratios and the times? And with farro, you literally cover it with water, boil it until you're happy with it and then drain it off and, and that's it. So it's one of the easiest things to cook too. So it's kind of like, checks a lot of boxes for me, like win, 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 win. Um, so I've got mine mixed up with the chickpeas and the dressing and the scallions. My greens are set aside. My parsley's chopped up, ready to go. My almonds are just getting beautifully toasted. So just really nice, light golden brown. They're looking really, really nice. So I am going to just take those and so I'm going to steal a little bowl and I'm going to transfer mine back over. If yours aren't there yet, if they're not nice and toasted, then no stress. You can keep yours on, but don't forget about them. Keep them, keep them in the forefront of your mind so you don't end up burning those and having to start all over again. So I'm going to set all that stuff aside. This is our setup for our salad, and we'll finish mixing that after we've made our chicken salad sandwiches. So how is everyone doing out there before we move into the salad? Are we trending along? Like, the speed's okay? Everyone's good? Okay. All right. Cool. Carissa's ready to go. Carissa was, like, doing... She was, like, a prize fighter getting ready to go. She was, like, just... Oh, she's got the baby on her back. That's amazing. I love that so much. That's awesome. Carissa, do you do that a lot? Is the baby cooking with you? Like pretty regular, that's fantastic. What a cool, that kid's gonna grow up and be a chef, I can tell already, this is amazing. Um, all right, let's get ready to make our chicken salad then, y'all. Um, so the first thing I think that we should do for this is just kind of chopping up and getting our veggies ready to go. It's a fun little practice and knife skills, and then that way uh, we'll get to the, the chicken part. So our scallions is gonna be the same thing as before. I'm gonna have a nice big bowl ready to go, and we're gonna use just the green parts here. And I just want you to kind of cut them as small as you can, like very, very nicely thin sliced. If you wanted to, if you wanted to be like a little bit more fancy, if you wanted to have like these big bites of scallions in there, you could do what's called a bias cut, which instead of cutting straight on your scallions, you could turn them to the side a little bit. And you do kind of like these longer oblong cuts, like these little angled cuts. But it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's a picnic sandwich. So I don't think we have to go fancy, but it's up to you. And I think I'm actually gonna go a little off recipe with this because I like the texture. Like with me, chicken salad, 
sandwich, like I like having a little bit of texture, a little bit of bite in there. So I'm actually going to take the root off of this. I'm going to sacrifice one. I'm not going to propagate. And I'm going to thinly slice even the white parts too, because I want that extra oniony flavor, like in that extra crunch. You don't have to go down that road with me if you don't want to, but. I'm going to transfer that over to the bowl. And the celery, we're going to do as small as we can. So with celery, I always like to cut them in half so that, you know, almost like ants on a log style. They're just like a little bit easier to work with that way. And then I'll cut them into long strips like this. Maybe three, maybe four, like little guys like that. And it just makes them really easy to dice up from there. And I'm going to ask, do I have anybody right now that is getting mad at me because I didn't take the strings out of the celery? I feel like every time I don't do that, there's always people that are like, you are crazy. Are we, we're all keeping the strings in the celery? This makes my confidence feel better. Yes. Okay. All right. Good. All right. So celery, the reason why I ask is like, I get really sad because a lot of people don't like celery you know, and they think it's stringy or it doesn't taste good or whatever. And celery is one of my favorite things. It's like a little misfit toy. And I feel like celery should get more respect. Um, so I'm all about leaving the string in, gives a little more texture. And we're just going to chop it up nice and small, like kind of like a small dice. And then we're going to put that in our bowl as well. Now, in the spirit of, we were talking about the weather before here and you know, up here in Seattle, which it's still been kind of like rainy and cold. We had, Heather, what did we have? One and one and a third good days recently? Yeah. It was like one good day and a pretty nice morning, like the day after, like, and that was, that was it. Um, you know, but we're doing this and talking about like picnic and getting out and recreating. Is there anyone that's starting to get some good weather out there and has been going out? Are people going for hikes? Are we getting gardening, gardening in? What are, what are y'all doing outside? Let me live vicariously through you, please. There in Louisiana, northern Louisiana, I planted my first garden over the weekend. For those of you who haven't joined before and heard my story, my husband actually retired from the Army back in August. So we're in our forever home, and I finally have a forever garden. So I got really excited over the weekend and planted a garden. So I think it's officially spring here, and we're getting some warm weather. I'd love to know who else is planting yet. We're in Wyoming, and we are not planting anything yet. It's about 38 degrees, but we have had some days of like 70 degrees. So we've been just going out, hanging out near the mountains, going on hikes, and we're getting ready to go on a trip and go camping in the Badlands um, <gasps> in a couple of days. So we're excited about that. Anybody else? Um, I'm in Milton, Florida, and we planted some butter crunch lettuce and watermelon and cabbage last weekend and so the goal is to get it to grow before it blooms when it gets too hot here <laughs> <laughs> you, is that like a six day window <laughs> yeah i know like once the humidity comes and the lettuce shoots up and it's really bitter that happened last year but we'll at least have a couple weeks of it so <laughs> i i will be i will be uh fingers crossed for you so, y'all, you know, I want to show you really quick. Um, put my, uh, what is that called? Celery. Celery. Green onions. And I also, while we were talking about all these people that have awesome weather that I'm jealous of, but also happy for you, um, I chopped up my little bit of parsley for this and put my parsley in there, too. So in our bowl, we've got our celery, our scallions, and our parsley. Um, and we're going to start shredding our chicken. But... Before we start shredding our chicken, um, I want to point out, I kept my pan nice and hot that I was toasting my almonds in. If you want to pop these into a toaster, you can. If you want to heat up a little uh, your oven and toast your bread in that, you totally can. But for me, I'm going to take my bread for my sandwiches and just no oil, no anything. It's just trying to dry toast it. I'm going to start toasting them two pieces at a time in this pan while I'm shredding my, shredding my chicken so that we have the bread all ready to go. So however you're going to be toasting your bread, just uh, know that I'm doing mine now while we're doing that. And I'm going to grab myself this chicken. Now, what we're looking for at the end of the day is about like a pound of meat. Um, so if you end up with a little bit more than that, you can absolutely still just put it in the bowl 
you can mix it up, maybe add a little bit more like yogurt and other stuff and just kind of make a, a little bit larger size recipe if you want to. Um, if not, if you don't want to do that, you're like, hey, Ben, I'm not going to eat that many sandwiches. That's totally fine. Um, shredded chicken is one of the things I think is really great for saving. Like you can put it in a freezer, whatever you like to use uh, in the freezer, you know, like nice Ziploc bag, you know, glass containers, whatever you want. And it freezes so well. And it's so easy to take out and add to like to soups and to other dishes like braised dishes and things. So just know that if you end up with more than a pound of this shredded chicken, totally, totally one of my favorite things to always keep in the freezer is like shredded chicken. It's just really handy, really handy to have around. So I'm taking mine, I'm just taking the skin off making sure that I get any of the bones, any of that kind of stuff out. And this is one of those things that's a little bit up to you as well. Um, kind of same thing as the dressing. If you like a little bit of a finer shred on this, you could put this into a bowl and like kind of take a couple forks and start shredding it up. Or has anyone seen that kind of like viral thing that went around social media for a little while where people would take like stuff and put it in your stand mixer and like shred it up? Have you seen this? You take like, you know, like pulled pork or like chicken like this and you put it in your like KitchenAid stand mixer and, uh, you know, you turn it on with the with the paddles and it basically starts like shredding the chicken up. Right. So if you want it a little bit finer, you could go a little bit finer. I'm going to leave mine in relatively like large chunks, like bigger pieces, because I like having sort of like that texture in the sandwich. I like having those bites and those and those pieces, but it's kind of completely up to you on that way you want to do. So we're just going to shred them up. And as we're doing that, you can just transfer it right over to um, your big bowl that we're going to mix everything else like into. Just like this. Super easy. Now, I will say one of the things that I think is pretty cool about going and it might not seem cool to you, but I guess maybe this is like a chef perspective is I know that you all have to travel and you move and you go different places. Some of them are big places like Maybe someone got stationed in San Diego and you're like, this is amazing. And then maybe you got <laughs> stationed somewhere where like I grew up in the middle of Maine and there was this like little uh, Air Force Base uh, commissary. It was actually like Air National Guard for an international airport, the Bangor International Airport. And the commissary was like kind of like a little, I'm gonna, this is going to sound awful, but it was like a weird little convenience store sort of meets grocery. And like the options were very limited, especially like in the winter time. So I'm... I know it probably doesn't seem cool to you, but from I guess what I'm saying is from the chef perspective, it kind of is neat to me how you all can make amazing dishes and like feed your families, not always having options. So you all have the recipe for this and some of you are cooking along, but is there anybody that's actually making substitutions or if you di weren't making substitutions, is there things that you would like based on this recipe and what you usually find, find around? I kind of want to hear what you would do as chefs. Kate. Kate. What you got? Who am I talking to? So, um, we put some hair on these. Oh, I can't hear you that well. You sound like awesome auto tunes. We'll try again. Pop it in the chat, and I'll be able to see it. And Heather will, or, and Heather will make sure she tells me too. Because I'd like to know, like, you know, if you're doing this recipe, like, how would you make this your own? Like, if you were making your chicken salad or different ingredients, what would you change? And on this end, we, um, we have a dairy allergy in the house. Uh -huh. So my sister's allergic to yogurt. So I'm going to do mayonnaise, even though it's a little bit more hefty. Uh, we're going to do light mayonnaise for the chicken salad. I like that. I think that's good. Yeah. Um, the one thing I'd say with the mayonnaise is um, just keep an eye on the lemon uh, in there. You might want to add a little bit more because like with we're using the Greek yogurt, it's naturally got a little bit of that, you know, kind of like acidity to it. Unless you're using Miracle Whip and then that's got plenty of tang on its own. Right. Isn't that one of their things? Miracle Whip. Um, but yeah, no, mayonnaise would be great. But just know that you might want to go a little bit more on the lemon. I like that sub, though. It's good. It's going to be super creamy. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, because I can imagine Greek yogurt might not be one of those things that's, you know, easily found all over the place, for sure. Perfect. And even these bones you can save for things like um, making, you know, like a quick little broth, quick little stock, stock. So buying a rotisserie chicken sometimes actually is like one of the best, like, bang for the buck things that you can, you can get. You can use it in a lot of different ways. 
Yeah? That's amazing. So Kate and Simone, right? Okay, so Kate and Simone, what they were trying to say was that they're using sorghum instead of farro, which is amazing and wicked cool and i love that that's awesome see that's one of the fun things about cooking is like depending on where you are different cultures what were we talking about nicole you were saying before class like you were talking about being in germany and they had like you know this little town what was on the cart yeah so we lived in the town um, right outside of Ramstein, germany and every thursday there would be this little italian guy that would pull up in his little chicken truck his little rotisserie chicken truck and we would get a rotisserie chicken and palm frites, which are french fries, um, and a little something for the side every Thursday in our little German village. So we were talking about how much we missed that because it was kind of hard to find a rotisserie chicken at the store yesterday, which is crazy, but no. It's amazing. I love it. That's truthfully, yeah. besides the fact that I just get to cook with all y'all and say how much respect I have for everything you and your families do. Um, I love cooking with y'all because like as a chef and just somebody that loves the world and different cultures, it's so fun to hear stuff like that. Like to be like, I was in Germany and there was this really cool old guy with a chicken and potato cart. Like how cool is that? That's such an amazing thing to experience. Getting all, I'm well, getting all in my feelings over here with the, the guy in his chicken cart. So let me show you a little bit closer view so you all can see what I did. I left mine, again, a little bit larger. This is your chicken salad sandwich. So however you or your family want to do it, you can shred yours up a little finer. I like sort of like the larger, the larger pieces. Um, I've got my bread toasting, and this is the point where we're going to season this whole thing up. So once you get your chicken shredded and ready to go, we're going to do a little bit of salt little bit of pepper. I'd go easy on the salt, especially if you bought a rotisserie chicken, because keep in mind they season that at the store before they cook it. So you can always add more salt after you mix this up, but it's hard to take it away. I'm gonna add in my garlic. I'm using dried cranberries. And again, I'm gonna leave mine whole. If you wanted to, you could chop them a little bit, or you can use raisins and such as well. I'm going in with my Greek yogurt. I'm not gonna lie. Things like this, tuna fish, chicken salad sandwich, People are very, people are very specific about this. Like, do you like it a little more with the sauciness? Do you like it a little more on the dry side? I got my whole Greek yogurt thing here, like on, in a holster on the standby. So that like when I mix this up, if I feel like I want more Greek yogurt, I'm ready to go. And the last thing I'm going to put in again is going to be a little bit more lemon zest and a little bit more lemon juice. And this will, shocker, is going to kind of be to taste. But I'm going to use all of my zest because I've got kind of a smaller lemon. I'm gonna use half of my lemon juice, and then I'll mix this whole thing up, taste it, and see what we see what we think. Svetlana, you made it home. I'm so happy you made it home. <laughs> so Svetlana was so committed to joining and hanging out and cooking with us from wherever she is that she was logging on from the bus or the train or somewhere. What were you on, Svetlana? Uh, yeah, I was uh, at the same with Nambri, and I completely forgot that uh, uh, the time for meeting would be, you know, right now. Uh, <laughs> so I had to get home. Yeah, it is my day off today. Thank you, sorry. Uh, no. I'm, you know, I'm working for a food industry, and uh, it's very interesting, you know, to see certain things, and I'm learning a lot about food, yeah, I don't know why. That's awesome. Well, thank you for, for joining and hanging out, and I'm happy that you were still able to get on from there and that you're here with us now. Sorry about this. No, you're great. I'm a least experienced person here, so uh, don't even pay attention. I'm just kind of like curious kid, you know, something. Well, that makes me the second least experienced person here, so we'll, we'll make a club. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. They just pulled me in from the street today. No, that's so not true. It's a chef there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. Um, so I started with just half of my uh, lemon, y'all, by the way. I think I said that already. But, and then I'm going to mix this up and see what I think. I'm gonna check for seasoning, I'm gonna check for texture. Do I need more salt? Do I need more pepper? Do I wanna put in a little bit more Greek yogurt? I think I'm probably gonna to have to just cause uh, I left mine shredded a little bit larger, which is great. This was, I planned on this just cause I wanted more Greek yogurt. And then you're just gonna make it so that you're happy with it, right? So I want you to like how it tastes. I want you to like how the texture of it is. 
And so just adjust as you need. So to me, like that's beautiful. Like there's just enough Greek yogurt or mayonnaise or whatever that it's like holding together pretty well, but it's not drowning or swimming in it. Um, if anyone has uh, stock or ownership stake in Subway sandwiches, I apologize. But like, you know, when they do like the tuna fish or their salads and stuff, it's basically like the tuna fish suspended in like a vat of mayonnaise. I don't even know what's going on with that thing. You know what I mean? Like, so for me, I want to be able to see the pieces of chicken. I want to be able to see the vegetables and have just enough of the Greek yogurt and stuff that it's, uh, that it's going to kind of stick together and hold together. A little bit more salt. It's pretty darn delicious though. I'm happy with my lemon because I'm using Greek yogurt. And to me, I'm good. Super quick, very healthy, absolutely delicious. Good to go. Let's go to the side view. This is what we got. Beautiful chicken salad, right? I would eat that literally just as a salad too. Like if you didn't want to do a sandwich, just do that. Put some greens and stuff over it. Maybe a little bit more dressing. Beautiful. Ooh, check this out, y'all. Toast. So this is a nice color. This is what we're looking for. Just nice and dry. A little bit toasty, no oil, no butter, no anything, just dry pan. Those are looking perfect. I'm gonna drop my other two in so I can make Heather a sandwich. We're gonna have brunch over here. She says, thank you. And last but not least is just gonna be our tomatoes. So you can use whatever type of tomatoes you wanted. Some nice beefsteak ones. You can go down to Louisiana in about uh, six to six to eight weeks and start getting them from Liz's garden. Um, that's an official invitation, everybody, from me. Um, but whatever you want uh, for your tomatoes, we're just gonna slice them so that they're like nice for a sandwich, like nice little rounds, something like this, like just beautiful little rounds. And just kind of set them aside and have them ready to go, ready to build up. And then it's sandwich time. So how's everyone doing out there? Are we doing all right? We got bread toasting, salad. Salad's mixed, we're in a good spot. Okay, all right, awesome. Ben, I had a question for you. Yeah, what's up? In honor of month of the military child, yes. when did you, well, two, it's a two-part question. Um, did you like to cook as a child? Yes. And then when did you know you wanted to become a chef? <laughs> First answer is yes. Uh, I like to cook as a child. I cooked a lot, uh, baked a lot with my mom and my grandmother. Um, I grew up in Maine, so there's a lot of like hunting and fishing and stuff. So like when I was young, it was uh, like real talk, you know, it was like pulling feathers out of like ducks in the kitchen sink and, you know, and like all this stuff. Like so very heavily involved in like food and the food world, um, like and creating your own food growing up. And I loved it. I didn't realize I wanted to be a chef until way too late. It was like after college, after doing other work, like different things, which is funny because my favorite very short story is that when I was, I first went to college and I went to the college bookstore and this was the University of Maine, uh, the flagship campus. There was no culinary program there. And for some reason they had a table of um, like old like books, like discount books. And one of them was like a culinary school cookbook. And I saw it, and it was like 75% off, and I grabbed it and I bought it, and I didn't have enough money for all my other like class books, but I put money towards this culinary school book that was randomly at my college bookstore when we didn't even have a culinary program and didn't buy the books I actually needed. And I'm, in hindsight, I'm going, that was probably a pretty big sign that I should have paid attention to, <laughs> but it still, took me, it still took me quite a few years to figure it out. Ooh, bread looking toasty. This is such a silly little OCD thing, but I'll, I'll show you all. Anytime if you've got the time to do it and you're doing something in a pan, the center, even in the best pans, is always gonna be the most hot. So all I'm doing is taking them and kind of turning them 180 degrees, because that way they're gonna toast evenly. Because can you see how the top side is toasted and that was towards the center of the pan and the bottom's not? So now I'm just flipping it and that way they're gonna toast more evenly. Silly, silly things. Attention to detail, right? Um, all right, so let's finish off the salad and then we'll build some sandwiches and then it's picnic time. So for the salad, very, very easy. Now we've got all of our delicious, beautiful farro. It's kind of soaked up all of that dressing, even more gorgeous. We're gonna add in our parsley. 
gonna add in whatever greens that you're gonna use. I've got my arugula here. And then also our nice toasted almonds are gonna go in as well. We're just gonna get this kind of mixed up, tossed up. You wanna be a little delicate with this so that we don't wilt the arugula too much. And it's gonna be even less likely to wilt now because a lot of the dressing is soaked into our grains, which is lovely. And we're gonna give it one last seasoning because I know I mentioned before, and this is one of those keys to making salad is that we wanted to make sure that the salad dressing was pretty strongly flavored, pretty aggressively flavored, and we were happy with it and we tasted it with our grains and everything was good. But now we've added in three cups of greens and some nuts and like stuff. So this is the chance where you wanna get a nice good bite of the whole thing and taste it as a whole and go, do I need more lemon? Do I need more salt? How am I feeling about it? I'm feeling really good about it. Okay. I'm in, I'm in hundred percent. That's delicious. So I'm happy with mine. Adjust what seasoning, however you want for yours, if you need. My other bread is good to go. Yes. And then we're gonna build our sandwich. So this isn't something that you have to do if you're gonna eat this at home or you've got a different way, but I figured in the spirit of getting outside, recreating, going on a picnic, whatever you wanna do, going on a hike, really great way to transfer and carry stuff around like little sandwiches or wraps and stuff, parchment paper. If you have parchment paper at home, there's a reason why like sandwich shops and restaurants stuff use it. It's easy for you to take on a picnic or to the park, crumple it up, put it in your backpack, bring it home. It doesn't take any space. You don't have to worry about it breaking when you go. So I'm gonna build mine right on this little parchment paper. So I'm gonna take one sandwich piece and put that on. And I've got this beautiful Boston lettuce, which I washed and dried earlier. Gonna put a couple of slices down gonna grab a nice good amount. And again, this will probably make four to five sandwiches depending on how much chicken you wanna put in there. Like four to five nice good size sandwiches. I'm gonna pile my chicken salad on. Maybe I'll switch over to the top for a second so you can see it a little bit better. Then I'm gonna take two nice slices of tomato. Layer those on and I'm gonna say I'm a I'm a greens fan. I like my salad greens. So I'm gonna take a little bit more of my Boston lettuce, put a couple more layers on top. But before that, I'm gonna go really chefy, even though it's not in the restaurant. What is better than tomato, fresh cut tomatoes and salt? So I'm gonna take a little bit of salt. I can't help myself, I know. A Little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, season up those tomatoes, just like that. Then I'm gonna put my lettuce on, a couple more pieces on top. And lastly, nice little toasted bread on top. So we've got this really nice, thick stacked, beautiful, beautiful sandwich. Um, and then you can just kind of turn it sideways if you want. I'm gonna try and put this in the middle here so I can get some of the parchment up over the top, kind of squish it down a little bit so the whole thing will go. And then just fold it over and wrap it. If you had a little twine, a little butcher's twine, you could tie it around it. You can also just take these corners and kind of like tuck them down like this. And you've got a beautiful little parcel to bring with you. I got a small piece of parchment, so I'd probably put a little twine around the bottom, but, or maybe we double it up. But that's kind of the idea. If you cut your parchment appropriately, nice, nice work, Ben. But you get the idea here, really nice. And it's really great because then you can kind of take it with you just as is. You don't have to worry about bringing any to-go container with you. And it's also like a little plate. You're sitting out in the park, you're sitting out in the woods, wherever you go, you open this up and you can eat your sandwich and you're good to go right off that. But that is our beautiful, I'm gonna build another one while I'm checking in with y'all, but that is our beautiful chicken salad sandwich, farro salad. How are you all feeling? How's everyone loving this recipe? You feeling good with making it? Any questions or are you all doing pretty great? I see smiles and thumbs up, so that's good. Nicole, Liz, how are you doing? I had to unmute myself. This is great. This is looking gorgeous. I am uh, really excited to eat this. Although we do have a meeting after this, I think I'm going to take it with me to the meeting. 
But uh, I'm also making lunch for my husband, who's home working. Oh. So I have to put the bread going in the back. I'm excited about this. It tastes amazing. I don't know if anybody else has been kind of picking at the chicken and the salad as we go, but the, the lemon for me is everything. It's so summery, springy, fresh. Ah. Uh. 100%. This, this, this reminds me of spring and getting out, and I didn't burn anything this time. I'm like, pretty excited about that. Um, so thank you, Ben, for, thank you, Simone, for the, the clapping. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, and thank you, Ben, for walking us through this. This is, this is incredible. Of course. I love it. Yeah, this is one of those things. I, it's the type of food I love. Like, there's acidity in the lemons. It's bright and fresh. You know, it's filling with the farro, but it doesn't feel heavy, right? It just checks all these boxes. It's perfect for, perfect for this time of year. Perfect for getting outside and doing stuff. I love it. And anytime you can give me a sandwich, I'm a happy guy. So, I want a sandwich. Um, so I want to say thank you again. I know I said it uh, at the beginning, but um, a couple of people were on a little bit afterwards. Thank you so much for coming and joining us here in the kitchen with the USO. Um, I am so honored every time I get to, to cook with Liz and Nicole and all of you from all over the country and all over the world means the world to me to be able to spend this time and bring you together and just be able to hang out and cook and do something, something fun. Um, I know different parts of your lives can be stressful and difficult you know at the best of times with everything that changes and everything going is on so having the opportunity just to be able to bring you all together and cook along with you just for a little bit of time is is a real honor and i'm really really grateful for it so thank you for for coming and cooking with us i think we're doing i little birdie told me the next one is going to be art of the hamburger like we're just going to focus on making awesome hamburgers is this true this is Rue, yes, thank you for that perfect segue, Chef Ben. If you are interested in joining us for In the Kitchen, our next episode is going to be in June. We're calling it The Art of the Hamburger, because nothing screams summer like a burger. So whether you're in the middle of a PCS and you're stuck at a hotel with just the George Foreman Grill, or if you're in your kitchen because you don't have to move this year, high five for that. Um, we're going we're gonna to go over all things you need to know to make the best hamburger. So that will be in June, and we'll make sure that you all get an email when the registration link is ready for that. We want to thank the team at With Homemade for joining us today and for Chef Ben, Chef ben for hosting this. Uh, this was fantastic. We want to thank all of you who joined us today, for those of you who brought us on along, for a, a sous chef helper in the kitchen. We just, we absolutely love connecting with all of you today. We appreciate you being here. If you want to follow along with what Chef Ben is doing, Ben, what is your uh, social media account that you follow? Oh, uh, yeah. Y'all can come and hang out with me on the, on Instagram. That's usually where you can find me. It's just my name with the letter C in the middle. So it's Ben C. Leonard, and you will see some food and lots of random things like my dog and me outside gardening and building stuff, but it's a good time. But um, thanks for bringing that place because more than anything, I like you all feeling happy in the kitchen and cooking. So feel free. You all can reach out to me anytime. Send me a message on Instagram. I'll get back to you. Any food questions, cooking questions, like anything else. So come hang out with me on there. Awesome. And, and make sure you guys check out the team that put this all together. They're called Homemade or With Homemade. They're at With Homemade. And they, they believe that cooking at home should be easy and fun for everyone. They've got a bunch of online classes that you can take to learn pretty much anything possible. So thank you again to everyone who joined us today. We appreciate you cooking with us. And we will see you next time. Make sure you check out the USO Military Spouse Facebook group and the USO Military Spouse Instagram account. We are brand new on Instagram and, and we'll be sharing everything that we've been cooking and everything we've got coming up. Uh, again, if you want the military child, check out your local USO to find out what's happening to celebrate all the military kids around the world and uh, check out everything that's been going on at USO centers everywhere. Again, have a great day, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time. Thanks y'all, bye.